So it's no secret that the musical numbers in Phineas and Ferb are, for the most part, pretty fabulous. But in that case, which ones truly are the best of the best? That's a question that I intend to answer with this video. But just know it is my opinion, so don't get offended if anything you like isn't on the list, because any- I mean, I have my own opinion, and I'll be honest, I think Gitchy Gitchy Goo is really overrated, and so is the episode Act Your Age. But, here we go. Without further ado, the top 10 songs from Phineas and Ferb. Kicking it off is number 10, Rubber Bands, Rubber Balls, which has Baljeet's, I think it's his uncle, give Phineas, Ferb, Buford, and... Baljeet and Isabella tore th sorry, I was just looking at the footage in the edit because I didn't remember if all of them were there. But he gives them a tour of his factory where they make rubber bands. And so, basically, we get a bunch of imagery of rubber bands being made in a weird way, in a weird factory. Plus, there's also just, the first of all, the music is really catchy, but that'll be a recurring theme on the list. A lot of it will be. And so, but what makes, what I think is really good about this is, so we get parts where he talks about stuff he doesn't make, which I think is funny because he, he wants, he says that his company could be a lot more interesting, but he doesn't care. There's a part where, um, so you, if you're looking at the footage here, you see that there are a bunch of dancers, but there's even a part where he says there's a break room for them. And he even takes a detour from his own tour to talk about the fact that they have a mini fridge. Like, that's funny. That's cute. I like that. Yeah, so basically this is a very humorous song. I'm, at, I'm legitimately surprised that it hasn't become a meme. Our destination. The planet Earth. So I'm most likely going to skim over any song that I think is popular enough on the show that most people already know about it. And so, as is the case with this one, Lawrence's voice complements the electric swing of the techno beat really well. Maybe it's because British people are robots, I don't know. But so, as well as that, he has just a bunch of really well-done rhyming wordplay based off of science fiction tropes involving aliens. Overall, it's just really good. You should listen to it. So, Squirrels in My Pants is a very funky rap song, When it's obviously one of the most popular songs from the entire show. It's on the soundtrack. You can download it, and you should. You should listen to it. But so, I don't know why this exists, it's kind of random with the subject matter, but man, it's really good. Also, why is Candace twerking so much in it? I have no idea. This is the only good thing Susie ever did in the series. I hate her as a character. In the summertime, when the weather is high. Summer, Where Do We Begin is basically the entire essence of the show on full display in one very very happy song. They have to explain to a version of themselves from a dimension where Doofenshmirtz took over, but Summer was outlawed, but they have they have to try to explain the concept. So essentially what they go through is just several things that you can do over the summer that are really, really fun. And that's just the overall s tone of the song anyway. Although seeing Phineas and Ferb's feet is cursed. Hi, babe. Yes, I am real man. You want to go skateboards? So, Real Boy stars Norm. And so, essentially, he hates the fact that he's a robot, which is honestly really sad. But as far as the song goes, his robotic voice, once again, goes really well with it. It starts off with some slow, lo-fi sounding beat. It, it's already pretty good. It would be in the top 50 songs from the show. But then he starts freestyle rapping, and it immediately shoots up to the top ten, because Norm's rapping does not disappoint. He is fantastic. Spinning straight iron bars, man. Mr. Krabs, I'm going on break. I need to bust a nut. Yeah, we all knew this was going to be on here. It's, it's really catchy. It's really funky. The electric noises in the background go really well with the lyrics. Candace and Vanessa's voices synchronize together into a really, really good duet. 
honestly, this this song deserves the fame that it has among the fans of the show. It, it's that good. Also, it remixes really well with Megalovania, so that's a plus. We need to build a wall, and it has to be built quickly. E-V-I-L-B-O-Y-S is another song that lives up to the reputation that the community has given it. It's a very, very good rock song, with a stellar performance by Dan Povenmire. But I don't have that much else to say about it, because of how much everyone else has already said about it, so instead I'll just make a joke, and what I find funny is, when I said that I was going to uh, make a top 10 songs video for Phineas and Ferb, so someone, someone on the internet, and we watch each other's videos, but he, so he saw that and was like, E-V-A-L-B-O-Y-S is one of my favorites. But what I find funny about that is his profile picture is someone with a bag on their head. Coincidence? I think not! Epic rap battles of his- So remember how I said rubber bands, rubber balls had a very, had very weird but hilarious lyrics to them? while also being very catchy, and also, by complete coincidence, also being a tour. This song, History of the Tri-State Area, is basically rubber bands, rubber balls, but on steroids. Everything is cranked up to 11 here. The beat is even catchier. The lyrics are even more weird and confusing, such as Venus being an employee at this museum. Like, that doesn't make any sense, as in the planet, by the way, I mean. That's, it's really funny, too. And honestly, just so energetic and full of life that you can't hate it. Well, I mean, you're entitled to your opinion. I'm just saying I don't see any way in which someone can hate this song. It's just very underrated among the show's community, in my opinion, because I haven't seen people talking about it. But also, the next two songs, they also aren't talked about that much among the show's community. So I am a little bit excited to show them to you. Weaponry is a hilarious parody of the national anthem. Not not that it has the same tune or anything, but it has the same sort of style, and it's great to just watch Norm rampage around the town, destroying every obstacle Perry throws at him. That paired with just, once again, how good Norm's voice is whenever he's singing. It it makes a very, very fun time. And it is unfortunate that this one isn't as appreciated as a lot of other songs in the show, because I do think it's on par with a lot of other ones. I mean, it's Norm. Norm is awesome. Everybody likes Norm, but oh well. I guess we'll just have to wait and see if anyone else agrees with me on this choice. Or my number one choice. My number one choice might also be controversial, but once again, this is my opinion, so whatever, who cares? However, before we get to our number one pick, or my number one pick, I am going to go through a few honorable mentions. So the ones I have listed here are Finajoids and Furbots, being, once again being a very good techno song with robotic voices. There's a Platybus controlling me. This one's a classic among Phineas and Ferb fans. I don't think it's as good as everyone else does, but it is still definitely one of the best songs in the show. Doof can rap, man. Frenemies, which is a Bulgy and Buford duet where they have to distract a bunch of old people, and they do a good job at it. It's very fancy, very dapper. Give Up, which is a very... It's a very upbeat song, ironically, which makes it motivational, but it also has a very nice, like, lyrical thing to it, and it teaches children, which is the main audience of the show anyway, a nice lesson that is, it is okay to give up sometimes. It's not always a bad thing. Uh, the Mexican Jewish Cultural Festival is, a vi is very catchy and has extremely good wordplay, impressively good, in fact. Us Against the Universe is a nice send-off to Candace Against the Universe, and is also fire. The theme song of the show, for obvious reasons, everyone knows that one, and it's very good. And Queen of Mars, same sort of thing with Finajoids and Furbots. Very funky, very catchy, very nice. It's time for the moment you've been waiting for! As obscure as it may seem, my number one pick for Phineas and Ferb songs is Watchin' and Waiting. Now, so, the thing with this one that I think it does so well is, first of all, there are clock noises in the background the whole time, ticking away. 
making it easy to follow the beat and tap your toe or snap your fingers to. But then also, the added vocals, guitars, and just hodgepodge of instruments that they use over the course of the song, building up into, like, with a guitar while also having singing, and then coming back down to the clock noises with just the singing again. It's, it's fantastic. It's wonderful. It's, if you ask me, the catchiest song in the entire show. And not only that, because of its laid-back tone and pace and general calmness, it's just a very relaxing one to listen to. I can just imagine myself listening to it calmly, it, just to calm down after a hard day or something, which is what I do. It's that good. And unfortunately, a lot of people seem to have slept on this one. But oh well. Also, I like the imagery of, the, once again, there being clocks everywhere. In fact, if you want to know, just a bit, weird little bit of personal information, when I was four years old, I wanted a clock for my birthday. I had no idea how to read a clock, or even how time worked at the time. So I don't know why I wanted a clock. I was a, I was an idiot, but oh well. <laughs>